what's going on y'all kicking it with the junkyard dog so we're in the junkyard right now at U Pick parks and we're about to uh, pull some five lug axles so you guys can see how to do the swap so the cars that you're going to look for or the vehicles you're going to look for to get the five lug swap for your fox body mustang is a 86 to 97 aerostar or a 83 to 92 uh, Ford Ranger or Bronco 2. Okay, so if you can find those vehicles, um, it's easy. You just go online and search for it, or you can go to U Pick Parts' Instagram and see when they load the vehicles up. You know what I mean? And uh, and that way you can see if a vehicle is coming in that's going to suit your swap. So, anyway, I'm about to show you guys how to get these axles out of this 1990 Aerostar. The process is exactly the same in a Ranger. So I'm just gonna show you how to do it in this vehicle and then just repeat the same process on the Ford Ranger or the Bronco 2. All right, let's get to it. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is remove the wheel, okay? Um, these are three quarter, uh, it's just three quarter inch socket and you wanna remove it now. If it's if the vehicle's equipped with a parking brake, activate it so that you can lock the wheel to get it off. Parking brake is jacked up. I'll stick a pry bar in one of these holes here to stop it from rotating and then you can break the bolts loose. That's the first step, remove the wheel. Now you might get lucky and there might not be a wheel there at all, but today we got a wheel, so let's take it off. All right, so I broke them loose. Was using this electric graphic to speed it up. So the next step after you remove the wheels, get the drum off. Sometimes they're really stubborn. This one looks like it might give me a little love here. For that, you gotta take a mallet and get to whack it on this thing. Let's go a little bit every side here. Boom. So there, axle is spinning free. All right. So now we get up underneath here and uh, start to let the loop axle loose, all right? So what you gotta do, you gotta crawl under here. And if you're afraid of getting dirty in the yard, it's probably not the hustle for you, all right? And see, and this is the diff, okay? Smaller than the 8.8, .8, but it's got the same size uh, axles. Okay, so one thing you wanna do so you don't cause a lot of mess on yourself and in the yard is, Get some sort of receptacle or something to uh, catch the oil, because this oil stinks and you don't want it on you. So I got this little pan here, because uh, this yard uh, is pretty good about keeping uh, pans and stuff like that. So even though it's really narrow in between here, I'm gonna try to shove it through just so it'll catch the fluid. All right, so the next thing you're, do, you're gonna do is remove 10 13 millimeter bolts. So it's gonna be one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. First things first, remove those and then break the cap loose. All right. So now that we got it loose, you're going to take a screwdriver and just kind of just jam it in between here and try to break it loose. Might be a little hard because it's been on for a few years, but okay. And there's a the fluid. And that would have ended up all on the ground and it reeks, all right? So you just kind of let it ooze out. Okay. That's called being responsible in the yard because they got to clean that up. The longer they got to spend on that, the, the uh, less time they have to bring in out new cars, all right? Boom. Now that we got this cover off, uh, I forgot to mention that you want to put this vehicle in neutral so that you can rotate the uh, the axle. Because if not, then it'll just stay locked the way it is. Now that'll work for us to our benefit in a minute, but for right now, let's go ahead and put it in neutral. All right, so now that we got the, uh, the van in neutral, we're gonna rotate the uh, axle here. So you get to this point right here, and you're gonna see a little 5 16 uh, bolt right here, okay? You gotta remove that. Take the 5 16 here. 
and I gotta pop it loose. There we go. It shouldn't be in there too tight. I've had so many issues with this bolt sometimes in the yard, so just be careful not to break it. Don't try to over, you know, overdo it or whatever, because it will just snap off in there. I've had that happen a few times in Aerostars when I was trying to get the 370, not Aerostars, but in the Explorers, when I was trying to get the 373 gears. All right, so you're gonna remove this bolt. So then to get this bolt out, which is kind of funky, um, it kind of bumps against this uh, cap right here. So you just kind of want to rest it against it right there, okay? Don't need to take it out all the way just yet. The next thing is to remove this pin right here. So you just stick your hand it on back, push it towards us, and slide it forward, okay? Next thing you're gonna do is push the axle in. So I don't know if you can see it or not, but you gotta push the axle in towards the center. And there'll be a little clip in there called a C-clip. So we got the C-clip to fall out. And I'll show you guys what it looks like. That's a C-clip, okay? This is what holds your axle, axle in, all right? So once you remove the C-clip, you're pretty much home free. Okay, so uh, just gather your little things here. Very, very easy to remove. And then you come back out here again. Okay, and just remove the axle. Now, before taking them out the yard, you want to make sure that this surface here is smooth because if they hadn't changed the bearings in the life of the vehicle, it'll gouge it and then the axle will be trash. So, you don't want to buy that. And boom so that's how you remove the axle and the aerostar is the exact same method you would use for the ranger okay so i'm just going to show you guys one vehicle how to do that but it's pretty much exactly the same thing now that we've pulled the axles from the aerostar and the ranger um we're now dealing with the housing now this is a SN95 housing from a uh, 96 um, Mustang. And the only reason why we got this is because it has the disc brakes on it or whatnot. Technically, you could leave these axles on there and just bolt it in. It'll have a little bit more of an outward offset because the axles are longer, but not enough to really notice, okay? But the customer wants, because of his wheels, he wants Fox length axles. So that's why we went and got the Aerostar and the Ranger axle. So first things first, we're gonna go ahead and take the uh, cover off here so we can access the C-clips to take out the axles. And then we're gonna go ahead and remove the calipers and the rotors and, uh, and then pull the axles out. Okay, so next thing you're gonna do uh, to get these axles out you're gonna remove the calipers okay so you have the option you could also you can move remove them from here which will remove this inner part here but you actually need to remove the whole bracket so there's two five eights bolts one up here and then one down here go ahead and uh, break those take them on out remove the entire caliper and bracket Okay, this will allow you then to now take the rotor off. There's a rotor, okay? I'll allow you to take that off. Well, I'm gonna set that down. So you have to remove this uh, bracket support right here uh, with 13 millimeter nuts is you gotta remove them. That's one. That is two. Boom. Comes off just like that. I like to kind of halfway put it back together. All right, so the next thing you want to do is remove this dust shield. Uh, usually in transport, they get really, really damaged. So if you're going to remove this from the junkyard, make sure you take these, take the time to take these dust shields off. Boom. See, it's all bent. So I'm gonna go ahead and attempt to straighten it out and reuse it. This particular setup still has the ABS 
sensor or whatever. So we're gonna go ahead and remove that. But now we're at the stage where we can remove the axle. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna actually push the axle in. Okay? By doing that, the C-clip comes loose. And ours, we got lucky, it came loose without us having to do anything. Uh, go back in there and use a magnet to remove the C-clip. At this point, you have four 14 millimeter bolts to remove this bracket, okay? This bracket's important, this bracket's important to remove because we're gonna have to cut it and place it on the inside of the axle tube so that you can mount the uh, calipers in the right location for the Fox length axles. All right, so there's the bracket. Okay, we're gonna cut this. Um, after it's all said and done, we're gonna cut it. Here we're gonna remove this little ABS uh, thing, thingy, and we're gonna cut it and we'll fit it over this side on the inside. And that way we can fit on the Fox Link axles with disc brakes. So for this part of the video, um, I had to uh, do with a cell phone, so uh, please excuse the quality. <clears throat> anyway, so this part of the five lug swap um, that we're gonna be doing, um, you require to uh, cut the brackets. Now I've seen a lot of times guys will cut the bracket to where they cut this mount for the uh, dust plate off. You actually don't need to do that if you just uh, cut around the right, this area right here, and flow into the, the hole, and then here you kind of flow out into that Hey, right there, then you're gonna have this part gone, okay? This is the left side, you see L, and this is the right side, you see R, right? Uh, left side meaning the driver's side, R meaning the uh, passenger side. Now what you're gonna do is once you cut out right here, you're basically cutting out this hole right here on both of them, the front top hole, okay? Once you cut those out, you mount it back on the axle on the opposite side. So this will now become the passenger axle um, bracket, and this will become the um, driver side uh, bracket for the caliper, not the axle bracket, the caliper bracket, right? So um, yeah, once we cut them, that's pretty much what it's gonna be. And instead of mounting them on the outside, you mount them on the inside of the um, axle flange. All right, so let's go ahead and get to cutting these right now. All right, so your brackets after you finish cutting uh, should look like this. Um, like I said, I, I managed to keep the mounting holes for the uh, for the dust plate because, uh, from my experience, the dust plate is actually pretty important. Um, it'll stop dust and crap from getting in there, and Ford put it there for a reason. So. I'm going to keep it there as well. Uh, so yeah, they should basically mirror each other, or Siamese. So if you go like that, they match. Okay. So now you're ready for your Fox Link five lug rear end swap with disc brakes. Let's go. All right. So now that we've established uh, the axle length so whatever you got to make sure that you put the passenger side axle from aerostar on the passenger side of the car you have to put the ranger side which is the driver side axle on the driver side of the car the reason for that is there's something called torsional force right so you got to imagine all these years of this axle spinning in one direction and if you put it in and spin it in the opposite direction it'll snap like a twig okay because the torsional force of the axle has been set in one direction so try not to mix them up if possible i mean i've had people who mix them up and didn't have any problems but um, i have my own methods and this is my my method so <clears throat> this is the aerostar axle here so let's move this sm95 axle out the way here so all you do is you come down here and you just slide it on in And there it is, the axle's in. Now, usually you'd have to put your brackets back on before you put those in, but because we cut the brackets to where there's an opening now, we can slide them on with the axle on and off, which I think is absolutely fantastic for the driver's side, the Ranger axle. Oh, 
axles are in. Very simple. So let's go ahead and put the uh, uh, C-clips back in, put in the, uh, the pin and the bolt. All right, so from this angle, you can kind of, let me see if I can dance it around a bit so you can see. You see there's an axle in there and it's got a groove in the axle for the C-clip, okay? So what I like to do is I'll use a magnet and I'll just kind of lightly or gently slide it in between these little grooves right here. As you can see, I got it on the magnet. Boom, once it's in there, pull the axle back out. Boom. All right, that axle C clip is in. Okay. Next thing you know, the next thing you do is you'll take this C clip, do the same for the other side, slide it in that little groove real quick. All right, so once you've got the C clips back in, you're gonna get to this part here. Don't rotate it too much because the C clips will fall back out if you happen to bump the axles back in. And you just take this pin and you're gonna go ahead and kind of just slide them back in there. That stops the axles from pushing back in. Now make sure that the hole on the pin is facing this area right here so that the, the retaining uh, bolt go back in. All right, so after you take the uh, the blue thread locker, you're gonna go in ahead and apply a little bit of the thread locker to the uh, to this bolt here. I'm gonna go crazy with it, but just enough. <clears throat> All right, there's the blue. And you wanna use blue, not red, because if you use blue, I mean, if you use red, it'll be Hell of high water to get this thing to come back out again. So, so yeah, there's a torque spec to this. Um, God knows that I've tried to get a torque wrench in here and never have been able to. So, my theory with getting this sit in there is to get in just like that. Okay, once you get it down and once you feel it seat, it's gonna try to spin. Hold the axle, just give it a good tug, just like that. That should be good. You don't wanna over tighten this thing because if it snaps off in there, man, oh my God. It's hella high water trying to get that thing up. Okay, so boom, your pin's back in. So we're good to put the aluminum diff cover uh, that we pulled from the uh, Mountaineer 2001-2004 Mercury Mountaineer or uh, Ford Explorer. Glue that up and uh, put the uh, brackets back on with the calipers and the rotors and we're good to go. Let's go. So now we're gonna take the brackets that we cut um, yesterday. See, I painted one side of them, so when I put them on, I'm gonna paint the other side. And then just slide it over the axle just like that. Okay, slide it right over. And this bracket, I cut it in a way that we can still retain the dust uh, cover plate uh, mounting points, you know. So we just need to cut it wide enough for you to be able to slide it over the axle. So what you're gonna do is, this was the uh, bracket that originally went on the passenger side. And now it goes on the driver's side and uh, we're gonna mount the flat side, which is this side, uh, on the inside of this uh, bracket right here. And then you gotta have these recesses here facing the uh, pumpkin. So I go ahead just like this and the nut goes on this side. So what we're gonna do is you take a bolt, you pass it through, goes just like that. And this will still be plenty enough uh, torque to hold down caliper so you can stop safely so don't worry about that if you're thinking oh it's missing one bolt it won't uh, affect it too much It'll still be good enough to stop the car get her done so you're gonna want to uh, Switch those down and then hit to the other side. 
All right, so uh, we just cleaned up the mating surface here of any silicone or anything. So you're just gonna go ahead and spread this gear oil silicone from the almighty Permatex. Now Permatex made a certain type of, of um, silicone for this because it has a tendency to um, the sulfur in the gear oil tends to eat away at the uh, regular silicone and eventually leaks, especially if you've seen them, anybody using the red silicone or anything like that, it just tends to eat away at it. Let's get this guy over now. Uh, once again. Okay, great. So the diff cover is now installed and now we just move on to the calipers and we will have the finished product of our 8.85 love swap.